Welcome to Science Hive. I'm Bee, and today I'll be answering a question sent in from viewer Mary. She asks, since I watched X-Men, I'm pretty curious about mutations. How about a crash course? Okay, Mary, mutations and genetics are pretty popular in sci-fi in general, and writers usually take a lot of creative license. So let's do a little bit of digging and we'll see what the real science is of mutations. First, let's talk DNA basics. You probably know DNA as this little squiggly thing, and you probably know it makes your eyes blue or brown, and it's why you look like your parents. Of course, we know DNA is a lot more than that, too. DNA is sometimes called the blueprint for life, but think of it more as an instruction manual. It doesn't just show you the final product, but instead gives step-by-step -step instructions of how to build something. So it'll tell you you need to build a wall, then you need to build a window, and these are the materials that you need to build those things with. DNA, of course, does this all in its own language. Its alphabet only has four letters, and every word can only be three letters long. Just like any other language, though, when DNA is written out, there can be some typos. There are a few ways these typos can happen. So let's start with a simple sentence to demonstrate. It's a silly sentence, but we only have three letters per word. Let's say, the cat ate new you. Like a telegram, there's no punctuation, so we'll have to add the word end to say the sentence is done. First, we could have what's called a point mutation. This means at a certain point, a letter is switched out for another. So we could say, the car ate new you end. It's a little different, but DNA is usually sophisticated enough to figure this out. For what seems like a simple language, DNA can be fancy. It uses a lot of synonyms. So think in English, if I said, I saw a bird, I looked at a bird, I viewed a bird, in all these cases you can tell that the way that I perceived the bird was with my eyes, even though I use three different words to say the same thing. DNA works the same way. What if we changed a different letter? What if we said, the cat ate new you and... We changed a letter at the part that's supposed to tell us the end of the sentence. Now we think the sentence is supposed to go on. This, you can probably tell, is potential for problems. There are some other ways that we can get some problems too. For example, what if we inserted a letter into the sentence and we said, the car tat in will in d. It doesn't even make sense anymore. And we now have seven words when we started with six. The opposite can happen too. We could delete a letter that's supposed to be there. The ka ten you we ent. Now we have six words and it still doesn't make any sense. So these are ways that mutations can happen in the equivalent of a sentence. But as you can imagine, there's a lot of other ways mutations can happen. So imagine you have a book. You could change one sentence. You might change a paragraph. You might forget to put in a whole chapter or you might put in a chapter three times. Obviously, there's a lot of ways that changes can occur, but we also need to look at what effect those changes have. You can have a gain of function, a loss of function, or no change at all. Gain of function means that something's been added, but it doesn't always mean you've gotten a superpower. Let's say our original instructions said, build a wall and put in a window. And our mutation has accidentally changed the instructions to say, put in two windows. Now we have twice as much light in the room. We've gained light and windows. Loss of function is the opposite. So we said build a wall and put in a window and the mutation has changed it to say put in no windows. So now we're sitting in the dark. Hmm. Mutations can also have no effect. So we might say build a wall, put in a window and the mutation told us to make the window out of plastic instead of glass. In the long run, this doesn't really change how much light gets into the room. Of course, we know that DNA isn't really building walls and windows. So what are some real life examples of mutations? One example we can see is in Moxie here. She has a mutation in the instructions for coat color, specifically a gene called agouti. Agouti can either give a solid coat color or stripes, depending on which mutation. Agouti is the equivalent to changing one sentence, but what if we changed a whole chapter? That ends up with something like Down syndrome, which is adding a whole extra copy 
of chapter or chromosome 21. And now the question that I know you've been waiting for this whole time, how do I get superpowers from having a mutation? First, you're gonna need lots and lots of time. In one variation of X-Men mythology, there's beings that modify human genetics over the course of millions of years, and the result is X-Men. Sorry to say that's the most plausible explanation. It takes a lot of time for big change to happen, especially in a big organism like a human. So unfortunately, superpowers are likely gonna stay in the world of fiction, but mutations are still a huge area of study and there's a lot that we're still learning about them. Thanks for watching Science Hive. If you like the video, don't forget to click subscribe and comment with your thoughts. And remember, as always, send me your questions with the links below. I'll see you next week to talk about reading science in the news.